Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Teru Ono uh, of Kyoto University. Uh, because the title of this workshop is Quantum Spin Tonics, I try to add the quantum question mark in my title. And actually, uh, this work was a collaboration uh, in many institutes. So our group uh, in Kyoto University and the University of Tokyo and three institutes in Korea. So actually, the Koyama and the Ichiba and the University of Tokyo gave us our uh, multi-layer films. And you can see here one, two, three, four of these in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> they are doing micro mining and they propose the some mechanism uh, be your quantum spin flip scattering. <laughs> okay. And then the uh, most important person is this guy, Captain Kim. Uh, he is now the assistant professor of our group, but uh, unfortunately for me, he is moving to uh, Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology on 1st October. And, uh, he's setting up his own laboratory in this institute. Okay. So let me start. So let's first uh, let me uh, speak how we found this uh, magnetic resistance effect. Actually, about four years ago, we're trying to move the domain wall in this by layer by using a uh, spin hole uh, mechanism. And so we have this kind of by layer. Here you can see there are ferromagnet palm oil and platinum. So by injecting a current through platinum, we expect spin current flow into the palm oil and give a torque to move a domain wall. And the typical sample dimension with the length is 5 micrometers and the width is about 0.3 micrometers. And before doing domain wall motion experiment, we try to measure how much external field we need to saturate this magnetic material. So we try to measure a magnet resistance effect. This is just a anisotropic magnet resistance effect. So from which you can determine uh, magnet field we need to saturate here. And also, uh, typically we need high current density to push a domain wall. So we try to measure how high current <coughs> we can inject this sample. So then we measured current density dependence of this MR. And then you see here, by increasing the current, there's a strange effect. So here we have a conventional AMR curve. But if you increase the current, then you see the difference between these baselines. And it increases with increasing the current. And here you see this baseline is now asymmetric. And this resistance change occurs only when the injected spin is anti-parallel to the magnetization <coughs> of the field magnet. And so, it, so here we have a uh, symmetrical resistance change. So we define this change in the baseline asymmetric MR. And next, I plot these amplitude as a function of inject current density. So here it is. So this is the uh, amplitude of new magnetic resistance is a function of current density. So, so you, here you can see. So this asymmetric MR shows a uh, false linear increase. And at some point, they are show the further increase above threshold current. So what is the mechanism? And then we try to see the material dependence. 
the here, the typical one. So we change uh, normal material from platinum to tantalum because this has an opposite spin hole angle. And then you see now the asymmetric MR shows a negative <coughs> sign. And the other one is the insertion of copper layer between palm oil and platinum. And then there's almost no effect by this copper insertion. So everything shows maybe this is related to the spin hole effect. And then the last year we found uh, the group of Pietro Gambarella actually reported, I think, the same effect. And here they measured by using second harmonic method for tantal cobalt and platinum cobalt. And here you see the MR sign is different. And if you compare their result to ours, then here this is a linear regime in our result. And so, but in this paper, they attributed the mechanism of this effect to spin accumulation and then named this uh, phenomena as a unidirectional spin hole magnet resistance. But however, the, uh, at this time, we had uh, many experimental results. And most of them cannot explain by this simple spin accumulation idea. So I will show you such a results. OK. So first one is a temperature dependence. So here I show the temperature dependence of anisotropic magnetic resistance. And it shows a decrease of amplitude with increase in temperature. And I think this is a typical temperature dependence of any magnet resistance effect, including giant magnet resistance and the tonic magnet resistance. Most magnet resistance effects show the decrease with increase in temperature. But however, if you measure the new asymmetric MR, then you see the increase of the effect with increasing temperature. I think this is cannot be explained by the idea of a simple spin accumulation at the interface between magnet and non-magnet. So then, so now we have an increase of the effect with increasing temperature. The first candidate should be magnet scattering. And this in, actually we have the increase of this effect by increasing injection current density. So it means if this is due to the magnet scattering, we can increase the magnet number by injecting a current. So first idea is the magnet, which is generated by the spin transfer drop. So we did a simulation by using a conventional spin transfer torque idea. And here again, I show uh, the experimental result as a function of current density. And here I plot the <coughs> magnetic numbers as a function of simulated current density. So here it's a just a, a reduction of magnetization by the uh, precession of magnetization. So as you can see here, as you have the auto oscillation here, so in other words, this is a, a condensation. And above this threshold, we have auto oscillation, which means we have a long range wavelength uh, magnets. And but if you compare this micro simulation to our experimental result, so maybe we can explain this curve, this increase above a threshold. However, based on the idea of a spin transfer torque, we could not get such a linear increase at a uh, low current density. So we have to think about more than spin transfer torque induced magnetic oscillation. OK? 
Okay. Then the other experimental result, which cannot be explained by spin accumulation, is the time scale of this magnetic distance effect. We just measure how much time we need to get this effect by changing the injection current. So here you see. <coughs> so for example, this is the highest current. So you can see the uh, sudden change in uh, resistance. This is the, the amplitude of asymmetric MR. And you see, so this is a time scale. So for lower current, you see the gradual increase of asymmetric MR. And the time scale is very different from maybe 20 or 30 nanoseconds to several nanoseconds. So we plot this typical characteristic time scale as a function of injection current here. Then you see uh, the characteristic time scale is larger, uh, rather long. It's uh, more than several nanoseconds at the uh, consistency here. It's, uh, you can see that it's about uh, 5 or 10 nanoseconds. It's very long. And furthermore, so it's the experiment obs observe this time scale show the mot monotonic decrease with current density, so which cannot be explained by this SCT simulation. In this case, with, you can see that this is a nanosec regime of uh, uh, time scale. But in our experiment, we need a uh, more longer 10 or 20 nanosecs to get this effect. And then, then we check the heating. We just uh, input our uh, out of the voltage to the oscilloscope. And here you see the sudden increase of out of voltage, and you see the constant. This is just a dual heating. So in this one nanosecond region, we got a dual heating of the sample, and the heat is uh, 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 saturated some temperature. So it means heating time scale is less than one nanosecond, which is much smaller than this time scale in the modern nanoseconds. Okay. So it means in here the so we can eliminate the thermal effect if you like a Nernst effect for this <coughs> MR. And so here, so we propose a new mechanism by spin flip process. So it's a really simple idea. So by injecting a current, we can uh, have a spin flow perpendicular to this Philip plane. So it spin hits the polymeroid, and then we should have spin flip scattering, which means we should have magnum in polymeroid. And the conductor electron in the polymeroid can be scattered away by these magnons generated by uh, spin flip scattering. And get, we should get the uh, increase in resistance due to this magnum scattering. This is the idea. If so, the numbers of created magnum shows uh, cosine dependence between the inject spin and uh, it's a uh, angle between this magnetization and the inject spin. And also, uh, when the inject spin is anti-parallel to this magnetization, we get a uh, creation of magnets. So resistance should larger when the magnetization is anti-parallel to the inject spin. And here, I show the angle dependence of this MR. And this angle dependence is consistent with this simple model. <coughs> and this simple model also can explain strange time evolution of this mechanical resistance. So as I said, the resistance should be proportional to the numbers of generated magnets. 
So here large n is the number of magnons. And uh, it should be in uh, proportion to the power, j2. j is the current density. And uh, tau is the relaxation time of mag uh, magnum lifetime. And then we have this kind of rate ex equation. And then steady state, we should have the dn dt equals zero. And then, OK, uh, we have a very simple uh, number as a proportion of j2. And experimentally, we know our MR is proportional to j. j should be proportional to the magnum numbers. <laughs> and just input the conditions into this equation, you can get the typical character time scale should be proportional to 1 over j. And this is the fit over location. So, so this simple spin flip mechanism can explain this j dependence of term. And so the question is a really magnetic excitation by <coughs> spin flip process. So he, we heard, so as already shown by the previous speakers, there are beautiful experiment by using uh, insulating ferromagnet and platinum. As you saw in the uh, talk in the previous speakers, they can create magnum by using spin flip scattering uh, by this inject spin from the platinum into E. And this created magnum can propagate to the detector and they get this kind of beautiful experiment result. So we can, the same thing expects in also in a metallic ferromagnet and non-magnet. Then the difference is between insulator or metals. OK. So it's a temperature dependence. As you see in this figure, the, the uh, magnetic resistance by, uh, obtained by non-local measurement go to zero by decreasing temperature to zero K. However, if we exploit this ML to zero K, it seems we get a finite value, even at zero k. So there's a difference. So because now we see the assembly camera has a finite value at low temperatures, so these magnets gener generate by quantum spin flip. So we go to the low temperature measurements. And this is my final slide. So we measure the temperature dependence of MR down to 2K. So this is a linear plot. Actually, we have the finite value even at 2K. And if you magnify this view graph in a logarithm scale, you see some saturation of MR uh, at low temperatures. So my summary is just a question. Can we say? This is crossover from thermal to quantum. And so this is a photograph of my group and a nanoscopy lab of Kyoto University with this. Oh, thank you very much. This is my summary. We found the DC current induced asymmetric magnetic resistance like this. And we propose a possible mechanism as the magnetic scattering, which is generated by spin flip scattering. And we observed stretch of the symmetric MR at low temperatures, indicating the existence of quantum spin flow process at the lowest temperatures. Thank you very much. That's all. <laughs>